In the last video, I used a mold and resin to copy blister detail for my Spitfire 14 conversion. This worked out well because there was a sufficient bulk of material and the blister was large enough to handle during fabrication. But that method doesn't work out very well when you need well rendered smaller detail like the blister on the underside of the wing. Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. Whenever the details get small and they have to be crisp and clean, I almost always fabricate them from brass, and most of the time that always means a combination of machine and handwork. Creating this small blister is an excellent example of how a part goes from conception, design, several machine processes, and finally handwork. The basic concept for creating a piece like this involves first establishing the outside dimensions, and then the removal of material to the desired shape. The basic dimensions were taken directly off the Edward E. wing. A piece of brass rod stock is selected with a diameter large enough to accommodate the longest dimension. The first step involves milling the rod stock to the basic width. The brass rods chucked in an indexing head that allows for precise incremental rotation. The preliminary depth is set. The milling process involves the rotation of the material so that there is an equal amount removed from both sides. I check the width so I can gauge how much more material I need to remove. The result is a perfectly centered rectangle with the width equal to the finished blister. The stock is then rotated a few degrees in each direction, nibbling off equal amounts to create a flat sided basic shape. The key elements here are that there is an equal amount of material removed from each side and the exact center line has been maintained. The rods now chucked in the lathe where I establish the final height of the blister as well as develop the pin that is essential for mounting. Creating a proper mounting pin is extremely important for clean placement of details like this. The rod stock also serves as the perfect handle for finishing the blister. Shaping starts with a file and finally ends with sandpaper and sanding sponges. The location of the blister is marked and a hole is drilled that will allow the blister to be press fit to place. Here you can see the final blister ready for priming. I hope this short video has been interesting and given you some insight into a typical fabrication sequence involving machine processes along with hand finishing. So long for now and I'll see you next time.